Okay, we are turned around this way this time. Oh, there we go. Maybe, sorta. It looks like I have Tinkerbell on my screen. Anyway, this overstuffed house, and I want to show you, I went to a flea market last weekend. I drove two hours to get to Mechanicsburg to a flea market because they're open. We're not. Not in, De not in Delaware County. So, I, I'm going to sit that there. All of this lovely stuff I spent all of, for what is in this box, $19.50. Now, as you can see, some of it is very cruddy. You know, there's a lot of dirt on this. But, <gasps> almost dropped the lid. But it is from, it's RS and Germany, which is usually a good quality. That is a lovely German bearded iris. That's the type of flower. You could just barely see the white one on the back. There's no chips. There's a little wear on the, on the transfer. Right there. There's a little bit of wear. But otherwise, it's in quite good shape. It's just, that's a lot of dust. That's gonna wash right up. Put a towel in the bottom of your sink. When you wash porcelain, you don't want to chip anything. And just regular soap and water. Be very careful. Do one item at a time. Don't sit a bunch of stuff. This one made in... It's another one made in Germany. I don't know by who. But it's this lovely little creamer. Again, no, no chips. Run your finger around things. Because a lot of times you'll feel it before you will ever see it. But it says Philadelphia. I am 30 minutes away from Philly. So this little guy, he kind of looks like a Hummel, but he's Napco and he's called Slumber Time. I did not pay that price for him. Most of this stuff I paid a dollar for. You know, I somebody I paid two dollars for, I think the dog dogs coming up. But I've already looked up some of the prices on these things. And um, just for, do I have it on this list yet? I don't have it on the list, but I paid $19.50 for all this stuff. And just on these two alone, I should make $15 back. They do not have their lid. And this is without their lids. These are for Edison Ambrel Record, Edison Gold Molder Records. Now, the reason it's a tube and it has this wool felting inside is because rec what's the thing? Records back then were wax cylinders. You can see the copyright date August 9th, 1904. So they're worth, the blue one is worth about $6. This one is rarer and is worth $9. If you had the lids, they seem to be worth about $2 more. So they will be going up on eBay. I have this lovely... Um, now, I don't know. See, you can see a little where to the gold right there. I don't know if this is what they mean by moriage. Moriage? Moriage? I think it's moriage. I have to look up if... Because this is all raised. All this gold is not flat like you would have on most porcelains. And it is hand-painted in Nippon. So it is older pre-World War II Japanese stuff. And they sometimes did this wonderful raised work in this tiny little demi tasse cup. I searched the boxes. I just searched and searched and searched. Why will this not... doesn't want to... there we go. 
doesn't want to focus. I searched and searched and could not find the matching, um, I couldn't find the matching saucer. This little fellow, he's not very tall. You know, this is the size of my hand. But, and I cannot read. There's no, you can't read all the name because it does say handmade Israel, but there's something up here and whatever word was there ends with what looks like P-E-N-H-E, -E, but you cannot, the beginning was never impressed. So you can't, you can't really get a good name on it. So I have no idea what's that's going to come out. I found other things that looked like this, but they didn't have the same name. They were all made in Israel. Found three other things, but nothing had the same name. Um, this is something I paid two dollars for. He is Arn Art. He is a lovely cocker spaniel. These long ears. Again, there's dust and stuff in the ridges. So I'm going to have to clean him. He is marked. He's even got the Fifth Avenue mark, which I've never seen the address be on there. He's got the number, which is what number of how many I think they were going to make. Um, but he's a lovely well-marked piece. My, But he's got all this dust. He's been on a shelf somewhere where he got absolutely filthy with dust. And it's all, all this is gray is dust and it will all come out you just have to be gentle and use dishwashing soap not dishwasher soap that's way too harsh um, then I also picked up now he was the other thing that cost me more than a dollar but then I picked up this lovely look at this beautiful it's just gorgeous I mean, it's, it's hand-painted, and the, the painting is exquisite. It, most of it is really tight in the lines. Um, let's flip it around. Amherst and Japan, and it says number 82. Oh, I cannot get this to auto. This does not... There we go. This doesn't really want to autofocus. I'm not sure why. I don't know the name for this kind of stuff, but just looking at it, you can just see that it's just an amazing quality little saucer. And I may have to go online to one of the many Facebook pages out there that tell you different things. This little fellow cracked me up, and I did have to pay $2 for him, and I'm not sure if I'll put him online or not. I do wish his, his hall staff, which is the type of spiked axe there, I do wish that sucker would stand up straight. Uh, but that arm is hinged. The other is not. There's no markings on him. He's got some weight to him. Hand-painted face, hand-painted plume, and I just... I just annoys me that won't stand up straight because I wanted to put him in my dollhouse. I have my mother's, um, she had, it's not, it's a modern dollhouse, but it's got some really cool things hiding in it. And I was seriously thinking of putting that in there, except that the more I play with it, the more it annoys me that it's hard to get that ha halberd, halstaff, halberd, um, to get the halberd to stand up straight. So now I saw this. You know, the funny part of this is that I knew what it was, and I snagged it for a dollar. And they're, they're worth about um, 8 to, to $15, depending on rarity. And they're from the Louis Marks, and there's no way this camera is going to pick this up. Just because it's all pink. It's called Stormy Weather. Campus Cuties, Louis Marks and Company, and let's see my Roman numerals here. This is from 1964, so it's a year older than I am. And Campus Cuties, there's 
I think six of them. I couldn't find this one. I found all the others online. I could not find her. I found full sets that had her in it, but not her. And the funny part is, is I had gotten this and then a couple days later, uh, Crazy Lamp Lady Jocelyn had posted a video and I see her going through a box from the same flea market and I could see this Campus Cutie in the box. I just thought that was quite funny that I, uh, you know, she had been there and apparently we'd been there about the same time, but she'd been at that particular vendor early on. Now this has a tiny little ding here, but the gold edging is in it. And if you hear popping noises in the background, it's because somebody on the street behind me is setting off fireworks. But this is a lovely little rice bowl. Lovely hand painting all the way around. Like I said, there's this tiny little ding, but the gold is in it. So they painted that after it had gotten the little chip. It is again hand painted Nippon. It is, it's still got this, you hear the ding? It's like scooted across my desk. That means there's no cracks. If stuff will ring, it doesn't have a crack to it. Now this little thing, I'm going to have to get all that goo out of there. Has some wear here. Time there's a chip there, a little chip there. These these little pieces you don't feel, so it's just the edging. But somebody made a candle out of it. But look at how sweet those flowers are. They're absolutely adorable. And it is a piece of uh, Bavaria. Hesh, Heschergen, gin. you know, my last name is German, but you'd think I could pronounce some of this stuff? No. The extent of my German is Hogan's Heroes. Now, that's how pretty. That's the back. That's the front. Isn't that just so gorgeous? Now, to get wax out of things, you have to be very careful. Put this in a pan of water. Heat the water up. Don't boil the water and don't boil the piece. You don't want to do that to the porcelain. But get the water hot and then turn it off and sit this inside that pan of water. Don't let the water go inside. Get the water up to about wherever the wax line is. So I've got to do it up to about here. Sorry, up to about here. But turn the water off just hot. You want steam coming off of it. You don't want it boiling though. And sit it in there and watch. Keep an eye out because you don't want to leave it sitting there too long. And see that this wax starts to melt. Now because this has a lip, it goes in, this is going to have to melt enough for me to take a sharp knife and cut this wax into quarters to get it out. But that's the best way to get wax out of old porcelain. You be you want to be very careful. You don't want boiling hot water. That would just not be good. Now, these two little adorable ones. I paid $3 for these. I'm really pretty sure these are Hagen Ronecker. But this one, this is an older Hagen Ronecker. Actually, I think they both are because of the painting on the face. He's also a little dusty. Um, but that face, look at that face. Are you going to focus for me? There we go. He looks just so angry at the world. His back is up and there's not a nick or anything, which I'm amazed that tail is still intact. But they're beautiful, lovely little pieces, but I do believe they're older. Now this one I found, they still make this one. And the eyes don't look quite the same. Um, this one, like you can see, there's little eyebrows. There's a very, very fine line, a detail line that outlines the eye. They don't do that anymore. And it's on this one as well. And they really just don't have those tiny little fine lines on the current stuff. So I'm sure they're older. They still make this particular one. They do not make this one anymore. The other ones I found that have 
similar way of doing the eyes with that outline all have names they all have chinese type names um or chinese knockoff kind of what they think in the west would be a chinese name and so i whoops my box is about to fall over so i really have to um do some homework and see if i could find this thing's name because it does matter what name you have and these two were the most expensive thing I bought. And if I get stuck with them, I don't really care. I think they're adorable. But they cost me $3. They're the most expensive of all this stuff I bought. Then I paid $5 for this. Now, I know from having sold a lot of... Um, I shouldn't have turned this because I don't know if it's actually filming me or not. Um, from having sold a lot of children's books, vintage kids' books... Um, I know that some pop-up books can be very expensive. This is a lovely, in the box, it's beautiful shape. It's a set, the pop-up library. Every one of these, ah, they got stuck on each other, is a pop-up book. And they're all in really pretty good shape. This one has a tear. This one is a tear to the page right there. And this one, this back page has a bit of a tear. But for the most part, they are all in good condition. That one's the one that seems to be in the worst shape. And they're just so adorable. So absolutely adorable. They need a little bit, like you could feel dust. They've been in an attic somewhere for a long time. You could feel a little dust. Do not take a wet, really wet thing to wipe off any kind of paper, any kind of book. You want something that is well wrung out, that is all, you know, has the, the least amount of liquid to it you can possibly have. But I paid $5 for this. It's still in the box. Um, I could not, f let's see, where's the date? The date is... 50, 1963. Again, something just a little older than me. But, I mean, look at it. The shine on this box, it looks brand new. You, I mean, you can see how the light from the camera just reflects on there. It absolutely looks brand new. So, I'm not sure. I'm going to start it as an auction. And I'm going to start it for $9. But I'm going to see what happens with that because I really don't know but I know there are collectors out there that just do pop-up books. Now, I know nothing about this. Absolutely nothing. I paid 50 cents for this. I have no idea. Now, they're two different things, but this was in this box. The box is for Claristat. Fixed, variable, and automatic resistors. Now, as I remember, resistors, from what I remember, are something to do with the old, old radios. So, that's what the box is for. So, I don't know if the box has any worth. And I can't tell if this is any good. It doesn't look like any filaments have any burn marks. But I am worried that this side is silvered. But that might be silver just so you can read that it's number 41. And it's Cunningham, RCA, Cunningham Radiotron. And I know absolutely nothing about these. But I figured for 50 cents I can't go wrong. So I'm going to put them up on eBay. As is, I'm going to sell them together. They came together anyway. Um, but I am going to let them know that they are two separate things because I just don't know anything about them. So I'm taking a chance, but it's only 50 cents. So that was my flea market haul. We didn't have much time because I had to work that night and it was a two-hour drive away. And I did have my son with me who... He's not as enthralled with all this kind of stuff as I am. So look for this soon. I probably won't post... Um, I'm just going to toss that back there. 
I probably won't post this stuff on this overstuffed house until I, um, I won't post the video on YouTube probably until I have this cleaned and have it listed. Uh, some of the latest stuff that was on my shelf that you didn't get to see. I have this little lady who's a Franz Joseph original. I have this lovely, and I cannot find a maker. I can't find anything that's even close to this guy. So if anybody who sees this video knows what this is, that gorgeous flower pattern and the gold goes all the way down to the bottom. It goes all the way inside the teacup. It's just, there's a little wear on the handle there, but there's nothing to tell me. That's what's on the bottom. Bavaria. And what I think says guaranteed, 22 karat gold. I don't know anything about it otherwise. I just don't know. And so if anybody can tell me, I would greatly appreciate it. You know, I have a lot of stuff up right now. This has got to be the funniest thing. The things you find in your grandmother's closet when you go to empty the house. This is, it's not going to let me just do the picture, is it? Here we go. Moth crystals. <laughs> it's such a funny tin. It really is. Um, it's, it's something from Philadelphia. The Boardman Company Moth Kill Crystals. It's a company from Philadelphia. And I just thought I'd try it just because it's just hysterically funny. And I've got a bunch of porcelain smalls up. Uh, a little Lefton girl from, and the mark on her says she would have been between 1950 and 1955. A couple of First Communion ones. The little nuns. The nuns are listed. That's in the one video. All this stuff, this top part here, was stuff that was on the shelf that I had to redo photographs of. And tonight, one of the other things on my shelf is this. This is Abingdon. I got this a long time ago. Forget that Goodwill price tag. Now, Abingdon, I looked it up. This solid color pastel stuff they did. Um, it's a lovely cornucopia double vase. They did sell singles of these. Now, it is worth only um, about 9 to fifteen dollars these things apparently are all over the place if you find abingdon and you find the stuff that has painted florals different colors um, not solid color pieces those are the ones that are really worth the money uh, i picked it up just because i thought it was a really cool looking vase um, but I've enjoyed it for a while, but the tag is still on it, which cracked me up. And, um, but I wanted to let you know about Abingdon because you do see this quite often. And it's really nice. Um, but, you know, I've enjoyed it and I want to pass it on and see what happens with it. But when I researched it, I found out there's a lot. There's a lot out there. And a lot of it is pink or pastel blue. Um, there's a light green. And it all just... Uh, it's all just all over the place. I want to show you what I'll be taking photos of tonight. And then I'm going to go. This is all from my aunt. Who used to make jewelry out of pieces of beads that she bought when they lived all over the world. Um, this is probably red onyx. This is, uh, and I, I, this is on shell. It's beautiful. Now, they lived in Iran when it was still the Shah back in the 1970s. So this piece she probably bought then from there. And because it has that Middle East look, but I just love the birds. And then the beads probably came from somebody else. All these kind of ground pyrite is Venetian glass. They lived in Venice for two years. 
Um, so that's, and then it's black onyx. So I have to get all this stuff photographed. Again, this is another one. They lived in Scotland for a year and it's a pin. It's this really cool pin with agates that are only found in Scotland. These wonderful colors. And she made a necklace. The only thing is, is that since her ears weren't pierced, all the necklaces on anything that I have, I mean all the, ne all the earrings for anything that I have earrings that go with the necklace, they're all clip. But it's not that hard to, to get these adjusted into something for like a, with the French hooks. Any decent jeweler should be able to do that. But I've got a whole, I've got a whole box of this stuff. And there's a dog hiding down in there. He won't be up for a while. I tend to do, I try to do batches of, of porcelain dogs together. Um, but, you know, there's, there's how things are going. Um, a couple more of my auctions. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. It's nice to be out flea marketing. When I actually get a decent camera, I will probably try to film at a flea market. I did a test run with, with, my, with my little Optio, and even though it has, I mean, it's got holes there. I assumed it had a microphone. It does not record anything. So it is old, so maybe it's just broken. I don't know, but... But the phone records, so you have a good day. And as I said, I will probably post this once these things. I'm going to clean these tonight and hopefully over the weekend get them online. And you have a good day. And hopefully, you know, we'll all be out shopping again soon from this overstuffed house. Have a good night.